Hi. Um, a friend of mine has just, well, recently been asking me, how am I sick of making videos or have I lost my, you know, inspiration for videos and vlogs? No, I haven't. And I did think I'd explained um, that my computer is broken in various ways and until I get it fixed, um, then my computer is a source of stress for me. I whacked the charger and I got it to stop flashing. What happens is I stick it in and it flashes on and off and it, and you try and do stuff and then your computer turns off and it's... Basically I've been avoiding it and the more you avoid it the harder it is to turn it on again. Um, so I, today I got paid and I have ordered a new charger so fingers crossed when that comes it will stop the charging issue I will get another battery if I have to and I'm not going to fix the button or the port at the back for now because I don't think I need to so um, I have missed making videos I've had lots of ideas well not ideas but I mean things have been happening I could have been talking about um, I had a really well I had a nice Passover. It was a shame I hadn't didn't get to make a, a vlog during Passover um, or show you any of my kitchen when it was all covered in foil. But um, it was good. I ate too much <laughs> and now I'm just trying to go to the gym and trying to lose some of it. All that sitting around and stuff in my face with matzah and I ate lots of meat. And I don't normally eat meat but Passover I eat a lot of meat just for that week so um yeah i've been going to the gym three times i've been aiming to go four but it hasn't worked yet but i really need to and um that will be i've been enjoying it and that'll be good when i manage to lose what i put on anyway apparently people don't like to hear about that sort of thing and no one's told me but they said i've read it somewhere okay but I think it's worse if someone moans about like how much they weigh and then don't do anything about it. I'm just telling you because it's what it's one of my priorities at the moment. Um, work has been good. My manager has appreciated work I've been doing. Mm, I have been. I was quite. I was feeling quite sorry for myself quite a bit of the time. Um, I kind of. Well my granddad kind of shouted at me at Passover because um, he normally goes away for Passover he normally goes to um, Israel and he didn't go and it was really awkward I won't go into it really it would just take up loads of time but he he was I find him really hard to please I find him like he's so disapproving I feel like he's disapproving of me the whole time and I've given up now I used to stress about it and now I'm like I'm not going to stress no wonder my mum feels like a failure if he he's so he does that sort of silent I'm in a mood but I'm not going to tell you why I'm in a mood thing and I just can't deal with it I'm sorry I shouldn't say that. I respect him so much but I I can't guess what I did wrong I don't even know if I did anything wrong but I'm assuming uh, he did say at one point he got really angry with me for doing something that I've done every single year and it's in my Haggadah and he, he didn't lead the Seder if he'd have led it properly then I'd have followed but he was sort of half leading and then half you had to do it yourself and um, we normally have our way of doing it and it wasn't that and I kind of felt almost like I hadn't done it this year. I have, and we did, but it was kind of a failure, both of them. Both of the Seder nights were a bit of a failure. And I haven't seen him since, and I'm a bit scared to. Because uh, uh, it's all that, oh, there's a lot of formality, and I'm not very good with those things. Anyway. Um, apart from that, I've been socialising, uh, yeah, I was feeling sorry for myself, that's what I was saying, and I was thinking, I need a new friend, um, I need someone at this point in my life 
to do things with. I want a new friend that shares a lot of my interests and wants to spend time with me. Um, I've got friends, but I want one that, like a best friend. I do like doing things alone, but when you live with someone and then they're doing their own thing, it's like, it's strange. You're not alone, so you can't get on with motivating yourself. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Anyway, uh, I've seen my friend at the pub. We went to the pub, um, and uh, my mum came round, even though it wasn't Shabbos. <laughs> and we watched the King's Speech again. Well, she hasn't watched it before. But I told her it was good and we watched that. I watched a really sad, I think, well, really emotional film, which I thought was had a sad ending. I don't know, it's... I don't know if everyone else would think that. Uh, I need Gilles to watch it and tell me, or a friend or something. It was called um, Like Crazy. And it was a, ba it was a romance between someone in America and someone in England and it was really very romantic and uh, it was about love but they it wasn't easy and it took a long time and um, they finally did get together but although they got together you'd think it'd be a happy ending but it's kind of about love and how it only lasts so long I don't know it was really very interesting it was almost shocked to look kind of cheap, you know, it wasn't done Hollywood gloss, um, but I know a lot of things aren't nowadays. Some of you probably not interested in romance, I know a lot of you probably aren't at all, but for some reason I'm so into that intense relationship thing, uh, I'm just so intense. Uh, I don't know what else we've seen, I'm going to go see the new Avengers. My boyfriend's seen it, but I want to see it in 3D, and he can't see 3D. Um, I've had some cool dreams. I've written about them on my Facebook, as you may or may not know. And um, one, I was had this giant. This is these are old now, but I remember them still. <laughs> and this giant silver time machine, which was a sphere, and. It worked through a birthday candle at the top and I had to prove to somebody that it worked so I went somewhere but it went wrong and I went to the wrong place and it was like before time or something it was real before humans anyway I think so I don't know how but there was ba there were baddies after me and they chased me and I remember being scared and I remember rushing back to the ship or machine and trying to do whatever I did that made it work. It was like I didn't know how it worked really. And I had a lighter, click lighter. And I was going like this, trying to get the candle to light and it wouldn't light. And they were coming closer and closer. And then, and then it did light. And I still didn't go anywhere. And so I don't know what happened or whether they caught me. Surely they would have caught me. I don't remember. Um, what was the other one? The, I had two more that were memorable. Um, 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 no. Oh yeah, I woke up and I heard crying. And I couldn't see I, I couldn't see where the crying was. And the room was my room, but it looked different. It was painted differently. There was a plant I didn't recognise. The bed was different. And I heard this crying, and I didn't know where it's from. It was little tiny crying. And it, I found this phone, but it was an old phone because it was really chunky. Um, but it flipped up. It was like a chunky phone that flipped up, but it was a funny shape as well. It was like wider in in the middle it was almost like a T in thick black that flipped up or vice but it might have been the opposite of that 
anyway I remember it was wider it wasn't straight it wasn't yeah so and I heard this little tiny crying in it and it was almost like it jogged a memory that I'd had a baby but that everyone knew including me that I just wasn't equipped to look after this baby yet or it wasn't appropriate so I'd given it to my dad and my dad was looking after it up north and his stepson was taking it for walks in a pram by now and I and I, that made me furious that that they had my baby and that that he was doing that because he's not very nice and um I should have been looking after him I was like I've lost all this time what was I thinking I need to get this baby back so I went out of the bedroom to find my mum my mum was in the living room or sitting room or whatever you want to call it lounge um and she was with two other adults um i identified them as carol and andrew from my youth that had grown up but i'm not sure if it was them really but they were familiar people from my past that were now older and um there was lots of technology in the room and my mom is total technophobe so it was crazy because she was saying and i think my sister might have been there as my sister um not my brother because she's trans um and my mum was showing me this game you could play on this like tablet thing that was amazing and interactive and and I was saying I was stressed and I was thinking yeah that's brilliant but what about this baby and she just didn't she didn't get why I was stressed about getting this baby back um, that's all I can remember about that um, it was the game was with a, a rocket or something and there was a massive television screen to be honest I was looking at television screens today I was looking for the laptop thing in Curry's, I think it was, and um, and they're so much better nowadays. They're so thin, and the board around the outside's thin, and the sideways are thin, and they're 3D and all sorts. And I'm thinking, my television's rubbish. <laughs> Although it was really good at the time, it's now it's rubbish. Um, so, but that's like a luxury item. I shouldn't even be going in there looking at things like that. Anyway, the last dream that I remembered, um, I'd been on a night out and I'd snuck this guy and had gone home and I'd like had a one night stand with him or something because I'd woken up in my clothes, like in, I'd only had my clothes from the night out and I knew it was night out clothes because they just seemed like that. Um, and they'd got like a drink spilt on them or something on the sleeve and I was really annoyed because it was a white dress with like beading on and, um, I was next to him and I was thinking, ugh, and it was Seth Grogan, and he opened his mouth and he had these weird, I know he's got funny teeth, but it was like the gums were all blobby, I was trying to work out what the hell's going on in your mouth, and it looked like these blobs, and I thought, oh my god, I hope I didn't kiss him, and what have I done, I don't remember the night before, I just don't remember it, um, gotta get home, and he had this massive house, um, he was really nonchalant, and there was loads of girls living there, and they were bitchy and horrible. I was looking for a bathroom, trying to get clean, and and my makeup was all a mess. I was like looking, trying to clean my makeup from under my eyes, and I thought I've got to clean my teeth, but I'm not using his toothbrush. Um, so I was like cleaning my teeth with my finger, and these girls were <laughs> being bitchy to me, and um, and they were all leaving, and they were like, "Come on, let's leave." <coughs> I was out in the garden and um, I was looking around in the garden and I remember there was, um, I don't know if this is from another dream or from the same dream, is it the one with the the pillbox that was discarded, discarded waste, did I tell you that one? Well anyway, I think I might have told you that, that might have been a different dream. So I know there was definitely a chicken coop. There was a, a abandoned, abandoned chicken coop in the garden. Why I would remember that, I don't know. It's probably from an advert or something I've seen. Um, so anyway, they're leaving in this nice car, and they're left without me, and because uh, they're all <laughs> so he doesn't notice that they've left without me, and I'm left with these um, Indian people. And I'm sorry, this is no, nothing again. This is not a statement a, about Indian people, but these people smelt bad. And they had this little cart 
and it and it had no top on it and they jumped in i think it might be pulled by an animal i'm not sure if it pulled by a bicycle or an animal um but it was a tiny wooden cart and they said jump in sit on the whatever and i didn't recognize the word and i they pointed so vaguely and i was looking and i thought there is nowhere to sit so I remember feeling that stress feeling you get when someone gives you vague instructions and it doesn't compute and and you know you, you, your blood starts to boil because you don't know what to do that's right. So anyway, I just I got in and just squished, just sat anywhere and hoped it was the right thing and I and we were almost like tipping out. We were squashed in and tipping out like cartoon characters. And we went off and then we were in America. And it was like it was New York or some kind of cosmopolitan city with lights and loads of shops and um, I felt really embarrassed and I don't remember anything else about it. But it was nice of them to give me a lift. Um, that's all I remember about dreams that I've had. I've... Uh, I'm embarrassed that this is a terrible vlog. But... I... Mm, bleh. Anyway, I got some cool stuff from Avon recently. I've been really annoyed about my skin because I got loads of spot scars and my makeup was looking terrible because I was trying to cover it up with concealer and it just wasn't looking horrible. So I got this from Avon. It's amazing. It's called Clear Skin Professional Blemish Mark Treatment. And it was on offer. It was ridiculously cheap. And the nice Avon lady waited um, until I got paid for the money, which is good. Um, now it's got salicylic acid I believe in it 2% salicylic acid and that's like taking off the top layer of the skin and um, helping the new skin come through quickly unblocks pores and it's just brilliant I only put it where I had the scars and after the first time I saw a difference I've used it three times and you can only use it three times a week because otherwise it would irritate um, so yeah, I'd really recommend that for anyone with scars like me. Um, I got really paranoid, you see, because I, I was talking to a friend and talking about scars, and I said to her, these aren't active, you know, spots, these are, these are old, these are marks, and she was like, oh, so I didn't want to be going around looking like a spotty old time, and I'm not, so. And I've been using this cleanser, which is two in one, and you can do it for eyes and all over your face. Um, it doesn't... It's really good deep clean and it doesn't um, give me spots itself. And this foundation is what I've been wearing because what I was wearing just seemed to look too heavy. Um, although this one is probably making me look white because it's very reflective. It's Revlon Photo Ready. It's got photochromatic pigments and my camera's gone wrong so I've got to stop because the time's going to be out of sync. Oh dear. Well, um, yeah. That's a good foundation uh, for if you don't want anything that's going to sit heavy on your skin and is quite light reflective. Okay, so I'll make another video soon.